in three, two. It's the official launch sound. Cult Mac. <laughs> it did not sound good. And boom, we're live. And this is the part of the show where, after all the fun that we've been having, Leander and Lewis go mute and just sit there and not say <laughs> Well, uh, okay. I, I wasn't I was really sure respectful. what was going on. <sighs> Shout out to Mark T, who's in the chat and says, Cultcast, I always have high expectations and disappointment, but it is always a fun ride. <laughs> Boy, that just sums it up right there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> if we were a movie, <laughs> that would be the movie review we'd have on the poster, right? What were you saying, Lewis? What is it filled with uh, high expectations and big disappointments, or what was it? <laughs> I always have high expectations and disappointment, <laughs> but it is always a fun ride. That's what we're going for, fun ride. As long as you had a fun ride, Mark, then I think that's what's most important. Shout out to Reese Grundy. Hi, Govs. Good to see you. Cheerio to Reese. And we're waiting for some more people to join the chat. we got a big show today. Big show today. As you all know, we got WWDC next week. So we got all sorts of stuff to talk about <laughs> next week. <laughs> you like the hand I'm motion? not going to laugh. I'm not laughing. No laughing. Don't pretend like you don't know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly <laughs> what it is. But I'm not going to laugh. That's what I'm saying. Right, I'm not going to encourage that. Shout out to Miguel Saldana. Boti XP. Always love watching your show. Thank you to Bodhi. Um And uh, Michael Cornelius. Hello, gents. He's got to be British. Le- uh, Leander, before we mm-hmm. get officially into the show, while we're still waiting for people to show up, do you have any exciting stories that you can share with us? People love hearing the El Caney stories. Uh, I was thinking, do you have anything that you could share? Anything big going on in El Caney's world? Wow, you already put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, any well, exciting lunch news that you could talk to us about? <laughs> Is your trainer still feeding you in uh in, I don't see the trainer anymore. Hearing? I cancel my 24-hour fitness. But, yeah, you know, I miss that. Yeah, he, he, he um, yeah, I should go back. Although I can't bear to get covid at the gym. <laughs> You're not going to get COVID at the gym. <laughs> Come on. Jeez. <laughs> Man, I've been slacking on my gym membership too. I need to, I need to, of course, they've been charging me every month. And uh, I've, been, I've been doing my best to turn it into a large pontoon that could be attached you, to a float plane. Yeah, go ahead. You didn't cancel it? No, I haven't canceled it. I canceled mine earlier. Well, why? You, uh, you got to go back in there and get yoked like you were before. I've been running my bike instead. Oh, yeah. But, you know, riding your bike is a, not a great way to get fit, I don't think. Oh, really? I don't think so. I, I mean, I know I have a friend that uh, rides his bike, and he always brags to me. like he, He's like, I rode 25 miles. And I'm like, uh, you don't look like you rode 25 miles. <laughs> wow. And, you know, <laughs> and, the thing about a bike is you can be pretty fit, fat <laughs> and still be kind of fit. Oh, oh yeah is that how that works you can still be it, you're you're fit but you're yeah, also still my pretty cardiovascular fitness is is pretty good but i'm okay. a fat blob you know? <laughs> yeah that's my point is like the the meme of seeing the chubby bike rider but they have on all the professional bike riding gear you you just you just sausage see that. pants yeah you see that all the time as is you call it the mammal right the middle-aged man in in light in lycra right well, you see that all the time I, like these guys and they look like they're on an italian race team but they're also 325. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when I used to, years ago, I used to ride with a guy who was literally spherical, literally <laughs> spherical, and um, he was really, really a good bike rider. And he huh. could really, he was super strong on the flat, and of course, downhill, he would go faster than everybody. <laughs> that's where they, that's soon, that's the advantage. That's where they get you on the downhill. They smoke you. So you're saying the fat guy's going downhill fast? Yeah, oh yeah, he would really go fast. But then as soon as we hit a hill, you know, like, he, he'd slow That's where he struggles. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah. understandable. That yeah. his... That's where he struggles. This is the part where you actually have to move your legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, yeah. Uh, okay, wait. Should we do a, should we do another Q&A after this show? People really like the Q&A. Leander, you had to leave, and we, Lewis and I stuck around. We did a Q&A. People loved it. People loved it. I think you should stick around for, like, Five ten minutes after the show. Oh, we three do hours. Yeah, I've got nothing better to do. Two, That's fine. Hours after the show. You know what's funny? Be... I feel like I, we could do a two or three hour show after the show and just do Q and A. We had a lot of fun. Are you going to say something? 
<laughs> I was hoping the show would, you know, we get the show on the road. Oh, okay. At eleven thirty, it's now eleven fifty. Well, we're doing the show. I right got now. busy, a busy day today. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Before we, uh, before we get going, shout out to Tobias who says I'm in class right now and this popped up. Had to instantly join. Oh, good. Your tuition money well spent. You're gonna learn something for <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see here. Michael Cornelius said, "Fit a fish." I, I don't know if is that supposed to mean something. Fit a fish. Fit a fish. I don't know what that means. Steve Wynn, Lord of the Rings, wears the Thriller shirt. Oh, man, Thriller shirt, or you mean the Michael Jackson Thriller? <laughs> That's too controversial. I can't wear that on the stream anymore. People get mad when they see Michael Jackson. Uh, and then Ryan Stryker, the Stryker, Ryan Stryker. He's back, and he's pissed. He says, I love the Q&A. <laughs> Do it again, or else. Great movie character name, Ryan Stryker. Okay, let's queue up Mrs. D, and let's get this uh, show rolling, because Leander is growing impatient by the moment, and... Uh, you know, we're losing steam already. So let me uh, cue up Mrs. D. Mrs. D! <laughs> Mrs. D, uh, how are you uh, this this fine day? Oh, very well. So hot. So very hot. Yeah, it is hot here in Seattle, too. I have one window cracked, but I'll probably be sweating profusely during the whole show. But if I could make a recommendation, maybe don't wear so much um, of the meringue pie on your face. It, you know, plugs your pores and makes it harder to cool down. <laughs> but it's so cooling from the fridge. Well, maybe I should try that. It is quite That's warm delicious. in here. delicious. I'll, uh, maybe next week I'll wear it for the entirety of the show. But if you're ready to begin, let's go ahead and get the music cued and let's get the intros going because we got a lot of stuff to talk about this show. Where where are my notes? That's not it. Is that it? Oh, there we go. Oh, I almost panicked because I thought that maybe I'd accidentally deleted them. So let's go ahead, get the music going. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the Coldcast, the best 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host. Aaron Elijah. Join me today. He spends his days writing best-selling books and his nights speeding the streets of San Francisco in the Coltimac Lamborghini Murcielago company car. He's the founder of Coltimac. Leander Caney is here. Hello. There he is. Also with us, he's happy to report that all charges of hostile workplace have been dropped by the state of California since several of the Coltimac writers have suddenly moved to other places or they just about face refuse to testify. He's the tough but fair managing editor of Coltimac. Lewis Wallace. Pure coincidence. What was that, Lewis? Pure coincidence. Pure coincidence. I heard that uh, one of the Coltimac writers had a strange emblem on his forehead. It was like big and pink and purple. And that it was like a mirror image of like a ring that you wear on your hand. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Just an indentation. It's, uh... it's like imprinted, but it was permanent. They found out like, it was actually in his skull. They couldn't get it out. They're like, well, I hope that you like that. Just... Just trying to help him open up his third eye, man. <laughs> yeah, I hear that you <laughs> almost accomplished that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Let me bring up my notes. Let's see what we got. Oh, boy. Okay, so we're going to talk WWDC expectations. I know we did some of this last week, so we'll, we'll kind of uh, just touch base a little bit here. And look, it's it's all but confirmed. New MacBook Pros are on the way. We're expecting to see a 14-inch now and a 16-inch MacBook Pro. So get your wallets ready. Someone was asking me if I'm ready to go on the MacBook Pro, and and emotionally I am, but <laughs> when it comes to my wallets, I'm not I'm not sure I'm prepared for what we're about to see. But they are getting rid of the Touch Bar, right? So hopefully we'll see a price drop, potentially. <laughs> good one, good one. I'm sure we'll probably they're gonna t they're gonna remove the Touch Bar and still increase the price like three or four hundred bucks. We'll talk about iOS 15. Look, we don't have a ton of details, but I'll tell you kind of what. The rumors have been and what we can expect in iOS 15, but the nice thing is, is that's going to kind of be a surprise. Where we don't really know exactly what all is in it, although it's kind of surprising that we don't know more, right? Considering that everyone's working from home, you would think that the leaks would be increasing, but su su surprisingly, we haven't really heard a ton of stuff. And look, we got to talk about HomePods. I don't think HomePods are really as dead as we have been led to believe. We've got some interesting HomePod-related stuff. If you love the HomePods like I do, then you may be happy to hear it. It sounds like there's something going on with HomePods. It's not the end of the story here, so we'll talk about that. And Johnny Ive, he's alive. Did you know that? He <laughs> seems to still be working for, uh, for Apple in some capacity, and may have had a significant role in designing the the newest iMac, which I was surprised to hear. So we'll wrap up with that story before we dive into all the fun. Let me hit up browser mode and say a very hearty thank you to Squarespace for supporting this episode. 
Everything you need to grow online, simple tools for your big ideas. Start your free website trial today. No credit card needed at squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. I always tell my friends who ask me where they should go to build a website, go over to Squarespace, sign up for the free trial. They don't even need your credit card number or anything. You can get signed up quick and then you just basically choose a template. And if you want, you can be up and running with a website just with the template with zero customization, fill in all your copy, fill in some text, you're ready to roll, or you can go in, dive in with their drag and drop system and change everything. I mean, really build a custom website without having to know how to code. Make the website look uniquely yours. It will look great on any device that visits on phones, on computers, which is really important these days. And it's really easy to update. They have a ton of features that are there waiting for you when you're ready to expand your website to an e-commerce website, maybe you wanna start a membership area. They just have everything, all these tools there, and they're included in your Squarespace subscription. So it's everything that you need to build a beautiful, beautiful website and grow it in the future. Head on over to squarespace.com forward slash cultcast to get started and build a site, see how you like it. At the end of your trial, if you decide you want to continue your service, use code cultcast at checkout, you'll save 10% off your first purchase. If you do a year purchase at a time, which is what I do, you get an additional discount and you also still save 10% off your first purchase with code cultcast at checkout, squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. Lewis Wallace, sending it over to you for the big story. Let's talk about uh, what we expect with MacBook Pros at WWDC. I know this is what everyone is uh, waiting for. Take it away, Lewis. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about these uh, redesigned MacBook Pros. And the latest thing is Wedbush analyst Dan Ives expects new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros to be announced at WWDC, which kicks off next Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific time sharp with a big keynote. Um, we don't always get hardware at these. In fact, it's usually, you know, it's a totally software-focused event. But, uh, you know, MacBook Pro, that's something that coders need, right? So... Uh, we've been hearing a lot of rumors about the MacBook Pro lately. Uh, supposedly going to be a major redesign of the pro-grade Apple Notebook. Among the changes, supposedly coming uh, redesigned chassis, built-in SD card reader, which, does anybody want one of those? It's not a professional port, Lewis. I could care less. <laughs> and uh, HDMI port, uh, new MagSafe charging port of some sort, and, uh, you know, a next-gen chip, Maybe called M2, maybe called M1, and you know, nobody knows exactly what that's called yet. Which going to be missing the LED touch bar. Do you have like some funeral dirge music you can play? Let me see here. What do I got? Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, no, bum, that doesn't work. Bum. <laughs> Thank you. Luke. That was actually quite. I that was pretty good, actually. I was impressed there. Uh, anyway, so this is going to supposedly supersede the November 2020 upgrade that brought the M1 chip to the MacBook Pro and the other other Macs. Um, you want me to continue? Ives also thinks that WWC will include iOS 15. <laughs> really went out on a limb there. Oh, why? Wow. Oh, this baby. guy. <laughs> he must have Ooh. a crystal ball. Wow, oh, he's a psychic. Dude, I kind of feel like this whole report. So first of all, when we say Ives, we're talking about Dan Ives, not Johnny Ives, right? It's very confusing. Uh, right. But I kind of feel like this whole piece was this guy basically just reading Bloomberg and watching French front page tech and then reporting to his clients what other people are saying because he basically just regurgitated everything that we have already heard. But maybe he has some information that we don't hear. Although I do find it curious that he said that it's going to be powered by the M1 chip, which it's definitely not going to be powered by the M1 chip, at least from everything that we've heard. It's going to either be the M1X or possibly even the M2. Most likely the M1X is basically the same architecture, but uh, with more RAM support, with more GPU cores, uh, more Thunderbolt ports. I mean, it's going to be... I see and more cores, too. Right? And more cores, yeah. Ten, ten cores, yeah. Going up from four cores, four performance, four energy-efficient cores, up to ten performance cores and two energy-efficient cores. And then a... I mentioned this last week. I'll just briefly go over it real quick again. So in the M1 MacBook Pro, I think you have uh, up to 16, gig 16 gigabytes of RAM. The new MacBook Pros are expected to support up to 64. Uh, the GPU cores go from 16 in the current MacBook Pros to 32 or or maybe 8 cores in the, in the current GPUs, up to 16 or even 32. 
or maybe it's 32 and 64. I'm going to have to look that up. I, I lost my uh, statistics there. But uh, in any case, uh, a lot more power on the GPU. So I know I see this every year. I think these are the MacBook Pros we've been waiting for. <laughs> and and the end of the touch bar, you get the return of MagSafe. You have the new Apple Silicon. It's just going to be a really beautiful machine. Now the question is, how is the price going to be beautiful too? Uh, it's going to be beautiful to Tim Cook. I'm not sure we're going to like it, but uh, Tim Cook is going to be doing that uh, that dance that he was doing outside uh, during that Apple. I don't. Even, do you remember what event that was? Oh, it was the like mill thing. Your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With Eddie Q in the background going, I'm doing the monster <laughs> mash. If you can't uh, see what I'm see what I'm doing, you basically you hold your arms in front, you let your hands go completely limp, and then you basically just move your shoulders up and down. That was Eddie Q's dance style. And when you're that rich, you can get away with that. The Monster Mash, isn't that from um, uh, Teen Wolf? You know, that sounds familiar. Maybe that wasn't was not that how Teen... he danced in the team, uh, you know, Michael J. Fox? <laughs> I can't do it now, but he was doing something like that, wasn't he? And I, I, had a, I right. got addicted to that. I watched it over and over at one point because I, so, I was so into the moves. TCs or, or Eddie Q's? Uh, no, um... Teen Wolf? Michael J. Oh, Fox. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, I, I would not have pegged you as a Teen Wolf fan. <laughs> Out of all the people I know, you're the last person I would say that had seen I've, Teen Wolf and actually liked it. I've never actually seen it. I've only seen bits the of it. Oh, so you saw the dance scene. Yeah, just saw the dance scene. <laughs> you, you know it's not a documentary, right? <laughs> really? Don't ruin the illusion. It was, it was so well done. I was like, how did they turn Michael J. Fox into a teenage wolf? That's incredible. Turn it back again. Incredible yeah. technology. That's probably what happens when you eat too much Beyond Meat. Oh! oh <laughs> you guys, dude, okay, gal, little aside here. Have you guys noticed how much Beyond Meat is everywhere? Like that meatless meat? They're, they're, pushing, yeah. that, they're pushing that stuff everywhere now. It's all over the place. Yeah, Have you tried yeah, yeah. it? Hell no, I'm not going to try it. Are you kidding? You haven't tried it? I gotta no. tell you, it's Good. delicious. We eat it almost every yeah, week. Yeah, well, it was designed in a lab to be delicious. I'm not I know, and it's full of fat and all kinds of weird palm oils and, you know, other kind of like <laughs> saturated fats and things like that. But it's actually really quite good. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't doubt that it tastes good, but I question whether or not my the cells in my body are going to be <clears throat> happy when the. Uh, when the, the ingredients of that get dispersed into my bloodstream, it makes me a little nervous to have a lab lab grown. Because it's, 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 it's yeah. is it lab grown meat? Is that what it is, or is it like meat? Or, no, 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 it's, it's made of some plant based plant based plant product. based. Okay. Yeah. So it's not the lab ba- the lab based. It's meat got a ton of fat in it. That's the problem, though. I think. Is that it's got too much no, fat? That's the that's the ton- secret of <laughs> success. Well, that's what makes it delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, and they use beetroot juice to like simulate blood. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That sounds her- like horrendous. They actually are delicious, man. I, I, I'm, as the I'm beet juice you. run, like as the bloody <laughs> beet juice runs down your face, like that scene from Lord <laughs> of the Rings where that guy's eating the quail, and like uh, the Hobbit singing to him, and the blood is just like running down his face. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, and you're going, oh, 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 oh man, this is delicious. Oh, mm, how do you think, Lewis? And then Lewis is going, yeah, because it is. It really is actually really pretty good. Just, uh, just, just getting all alpha on that burger. Hey, before we continue. I have to say, this is for Adam Broussard, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. That one's for you, Adam. Anytime you ask, I'm going to give it to you. You ask for the real deal, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to explain that. We're just going to move on. A uh, quote from a bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. So There's more to this Ives thing. You want to hear the rest? Yes, please continue, Lewis. I'm sorry I interrupted uh, you. Yeah, I mean, I you know, dissed him of saying, yeah, iOS 15 is coming. Okay. Uh, but he, so he also said, uh, gave some information about what he thinks will be in iOS 15. He thinks it will be very focused around new device privacy protections, and it will include various notifications and lock screen changes and potentially a revamped iMessage feature set. He thinks the privacy is going to be a main focus and theme of Tim Cook's keynote, and uh, you know, he also says, gee whiz, no kidding, uh, there's going to be Mac OS, Watch OS, iPad OS, and TV OS. Once again, yes, I think that's fairly safe to predict. But this is a final little bit from his report. He thinks that Apple will drop some, quote unquote, breadcrumbs about future products. This includes a long-awaited Apple Glass headset expected for summer 20, 
2022. That's hard to say, 2022, and a possible Apple Car in 2024. I can't wait to see that Apple Car breadcrumb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's an Apple Car breadcrumb? <laughs> a big know. greasy oil stain or something? <laughs> I mean, well, that's very last century, Lander. Uh, it's going to be yeah, a giant I, solar panel, right? <laughs> With wheels on the bottom. <laughs> I, 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 this is like a lot of ridiculous nonsense, don't you think? Do you think they're really going to tease out the app? Oh yeah, we're working on an Apple Car. They're going to, they're going to, like you know, show it, show something off. I mean, as much as I would be in pure ecstasy. I mean, pure ecstasy. I mean, uh, you know, pinching the nips and everything. I don't think it's going to happen. It seems a little I could, early. I could see them mentioning at some point mentioning apple glass as a product that they're going to release a, a while you know because i mean they've done that with other things but they don't past. they don't do breadcrumbs do they have you, uh, apple's never ever done that it's either like it's either a full reveal or not right. it's either like you know they don't yeah, they, they, I, I, I don't know what he means by breadcrumbs i don't know what in the world that would i think he means like. little teases of things that are, are going to come little hits, he's going to you know? feed the pigeons around uh <laughs> Apple well, Park is going to sit out in the garden there by the, you know, the pond, and they've got some ducks, and he's going to be chucking some chips at him. Wait a second, are we talking about Apple Car? Or are we talking about the mixed reality headset here? I lost track. Well, both. You know, okay. Both. I, I I just don't believe any of this. You know, I, I could see them seems... teasing mixed reality headset because it seems like there is a lot of smoke around that, and we had a uh, professional reporter Alex E. Heath report on the uh, on the prototype and everything and we know how <laughs> professional he is so it seems like they're further along with the mixed reality headset and if you're gonna announce a new product like that clearly you're gonna need to give developers access to the os well, right but you know so like, i can see them talking about, about that but not apple Car. are they gonna are they either gonna reveal it fully or not well you know that I mean? oh yeah i get what you're saying yeah it would seem like they would have to reveal it fully and not just say hey this is on the way and then move on and if they were going to reveal it, fu reveal it fully, I mean, this is such a big new paradigm. They would have to devote the whole thing to that, wouldn't they? Or at least a good chunk of it. Well, maybe they will. I mean, that that might be what happens. Although, if they were going to do that, then they probably wouldn't release new MacBook Pros at the same time. So yeah, so I'm kind of leaning towards no. We're gonna get we're gonna get all of the OSs updated, which always feels like Christmas to me. I love seeing all the <laughs> new features, and it makes your hardware feel new again with all these new features pouring in for all, for all all across all your devices. And then at the end, oh, hey, y'all, here's some MacBook Pros. Here's the Mac Mini Pro, which, by the way, I believe, I believe I was the first to coin the phrase Mac Mini Pro, and I, and I probably mentioned this three months ago. I've been seeing some of the tech press start to use the name that I coined. I just want to point that out and let them know that there's no hard feelings. If you want to take my <laughs> analysis, integrate it into your own work. I mean, I would appreciate a courtesy of Verifon Elijah. If you want to throw that in there, that's fine. If not, no hard feelings. Yes, Lewis, what were you going to say? No, I was just saying, well, that's also pretty far out on a limb. Mac Mini Pro? Yeah. I don't think it's that far out, man. If they're going to be really... So, so they're clearly... They're delineating their hardware into more of a consumer grade and then the pro grade stuff, right? I mean, if you look at the iMac, the iMac was always kind of on the line. It was extremely powerful. It could be used by pros for video editing and that type of thing. And then you look at what they did with the new iMac and they really took it down in some ways and made it more of a consumer product with the colors. The M1 is the same chip they use in their MacBook Air and Clearly, they're working on a larger version, according to Bloomberg, which will probably have the M1X or something. So you're going to have like the pro line over here and then the consumer grade line over here. And the Mac Mini has the M1 in it. So why not add the M1X Mac Mini Pro and have a pro version of the little Mac that everyone loves? And the only reason that I feel like the only reason that people have never taken the the Mac Mini seriously is because the GPU has really been a horrendous turd. But if they would add a legitimate GPU, if they gave the Mac Mini Pro the heart of the iMac Pro, quote unquote, and sold it without a monitor for a smaller price, I think that would be a massive hit, especially with developers, especially with video editors who don't necessarily need the screen and the bells and whistles of the iMac, quote unquote, Pro, and just want a cheaper option they could use with their existing peripherals and their monitors i think that's a win-win and now i'm not an apple marketing manager but if i were 
I'd be sending a memo to TC saying, give the people what they want. Have I convinced <laughs> you, Lewis? Oh, I, I was thinking it's just more like the name. I mean, the name. I, I think it oh. sounds like, a, a, you know, a, a, sure, the product sounds possible. Mm-hmm. The name? Yeah, the name seems great. Mac Mini Pro and then Mac <laughs> Pro Mini. <laughs> I mean, how many other options are there? Mac Mini Super Air Pro Max. Well, I hope they don't go with that because that's I wonder if they, confusing. They just well, have Pro like Mac a... Mini? Mini Mac Pro? Mini Mini Pro Mac. You could do Pro it, Mac it, Mini. It, it works almost in, what, in whatever order you put it in, right? Yeah. Isn't there Pro a wor- Mac Mini? Isn't there a word for that? Pro Mini Mac? When you read something the same forward as backwards? Mini Pro Mac. Palindrome. It's a palindrome. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mac Pro Mini Pro, Pro Mini Mac. Pro Mac Mini Mini Mac Pro. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> That's a palindrome, right? <sighs> yeah, this is the kind of hard-hitting journalism people tune in for. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're going to hear about the Mac Pro Mini Pro on Bloomberg? I don't think so. No, Definitely not on The Verge. I- all right, well, let's see here. Is there anything else to that story, Lewis Wallace? Or, uh, I think are we... we flogged it to death. Yeah, it's it's been dead for 10 minutes, so <laughs> let's... Let's quickly move on and, and, and never speak of this conversation again. So let's talk about where are we now? Okay, so let's talk about iOS 15 now. Like as I mentioned, I, I don't want to get you. I don't want you get. I want to get you too excited here because we don't know exactly what we're getting with iOS 15, which I can say historically is not unusual. We don't often know exactly what we're getting with iOS. We we often know more about hardware for some reason. So, but well, here, yeah, there's no leaks coming out of Apple. You know, yeah, HQ, I guess that's, that's a, good a tight point. ship there, and all the all the hardware stuff's coming out of the supply chain. But anyway, okay, so there we go. So let's hit up browser mode. Why interactive widgets might be the best improvements in iOS 15. So I love interactive widgets. I use them all the time. One of my favorite additions to iOS, but they they haven't built it out nearly as much as they should have. And I'm hoping, and it seems like in this version of iOS, we're going to get much more in in that realm. So let's just dive into the story here. Let me move this here so I can actually see what I'm doing. So uh, widgets actually debuted in iOS or in iPad OS 13, made the jump to iOS in 2020, but Apple has yet to make them interactive. The current version gives fast, fast access to useful information, but they can't do a whole lot. That'll change with iOS 15 according to Phone Arena. If correct, we may soon see widgets that let you track tracks, change tracks, excuse me, in Apple Music, create a calendar event, write a note, send a tweet, and hopefully much, much more. So far, Apple has kept thoroughly has thoroughly kept the wraps on what's coming in the next version of iOS, but some details have supposedly leaked out, so we're expecting more than just interactive widgets. Apparently, the Messages application uh, is going to be beefed up to make it more competitive with competitors like WhatsApp, according to uh, the Germinator, and uh, hopefully they add support for this would be the killer feature adding support to android and to pc now is that going to happen i doubt it but one of the things i love about signal which is the communications app that i generally use the most now because it's cross-platform it has a uh, it has a pc client so i can text my friends from my pc or my iphone dude it's so handy to be able to do that i would love to see apple add some kind of cross-platform compatibility here, but uh, keep holding your breath on that one. I don't think that's coming anytime soon. Actually, don't hold your breath. You'll probably end up blue <laughs> and, and dead. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, you will supposedly be able to tell uh, your iPhone that you're driving, working, or sleeping, and that will control what notifications you receive and how. This already works when driving. Bloomberg says Apple will expand the feature in iOS 15. The other big improvements, so there will probably be a big focus on privacy. So a lot more privacy features that might be the focus of the entire update. Food tracking of some kind. So you'll be able to input your your diet, things that you're eating, and and maybe Apple will even have some kind of database that they've been working on that will help you track the kinds of things that you're eating and track calories and and other information about that. Dark mode updates, including uh, UI tweaks to iMessage bubbles, more accessibility features, of course, and then... And I can't believe we don't already have this home screen widgets for iPad OS. Which uh, you would think that they would have done that first, right? Yeah, I keep thinking that you can do it, and then I go to do it, and of course you you can't <laughs> do it. And I I love the home screen widgets. I um I keep a bunch of them, especially on this screen, which I'll show you guys. 
I have a, a bunch of the uh, the stocks widgets, so I can see just oh, how poorly red. all my how stocks are How much money are you're losing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't yet show red. you how much I'm down, but um, but hopefully they add something like that. Yeah. You know, the only thing that we're up on, Lewis, is AMC. I don't know if you're following what's happening with AMC. I heard it's up like 100% in the last day or so. Dude, oh, dude, it's way more than 100%. I think like a week and a half ago, it was at 15, maybe 14, and now it's yesterday it closed at like 68. And, nice. Uh, the reason it's up so much is because I sold several weeks ago no. uh, to buy more Doge. And then Doge crashed and AMC <laughs> skyrocketed. <laughs> did you really? I sure I had did. Some later. AMC. I bought some ages ago, and then I because it crashed, I just sat on it. And then I watched it yesterday, like double. And oh, I was you more than doubled it, your money. I, have well, you it, have it, you checked it, recently? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna, I was, I was about to hit the the sell thing yesterday, and then I started looking at some of the stuff on Twitter, and they were saying it's gonna go to a thousand next week because it's a gamma squeeze on the <laughs> Wall Street hedge funds. And that they're going to be caught in this loop of buying more and more stocks, so the price is going to really skyrocket early next week. That's what they're saying on on Reddit, anyway. Oh man, Reddit so, is driving. So you know, hold on. By the way, uh, I, I'm just going to acknowledge that it looks like Lander, your picture froze for some reason, and uh, oh. but you look so well, relaxed. Like in the, on the image, it froze on. Like you have your arm up, and you just look like you're just really relaxed chilling. right now. Yeah, looks it's like actually one of those in memoriam things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Lander Keeney, yeah, 1749 to 2021, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, if it doesn't fix itself, I might have you turn your video off and on again here to see if that. Is it still frozen? Yeah, it's still frozen. Oh, yeah. And actually, for a second, um, Lewis froze too, but he's he's back, and you're still frozen for some reason. Uh, uh, so let's uh, give it a second, see if it uh, if it fixes it. So um, actually, and of course, it freezes right as we come up to your story, Lander. So you want to try turning your video off and on again and see if uh, that fixes the problem? Yeah, Greg M. We know LK's camera froze. There he is. He's there back. He is. That Blink better. Did it work? Thank you for the heads up here, chat. Yeah. So we got some <laughs> more some more information on uh, HomePods, and Leander's gonna fill us in on that one now that he's been unfrozen. Yeah, there's two. Apparently, there's a pair of intriguing HomePod devices in the works. So there's a, um, a proposed HomePod speaker with a built-in screen and another device combining a HomePod, a FaceTime camera, and Apple TV, uh, which apparently are in early development Apple, um, a, a, you know, according to um, a report on Bloomberg. So the report, which also includes details of Apple's AirPods roadmap, describes the pair of devices as being part of, quote, Apple's broader home audio and accessories strategy. Uh, unfortunately, there's no word on when either might arrive. Uh, actually, I saw some pretty funny mock-ups on um, on Twitter. Uh, someone had taken, you know, the, remember the G4 iMac? Yeah. So they they the base, you know, it had a curved base. Um, that has all been covered in black fabric, and then there's a screen on top of the arm that that follows you oh, around. Oh, actually, look kind of. I saw that. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna see if I, I can. Uh, I quite liked it. Up. I thought, yeah, damn, that that'd be actually be pretty pretty cool if it uh, if it did look like that. Uh, um, yeah. Go ahead. So, Anyway, so this isn't the first time we've heard about these devices. So back in April, um, Germinator again, um, he's uh, you know wrote a report that said Apple was weighing out the possibility of a quote high-end speaker that could also be a HomeKit hub with an iPad-style touchscreen to compete with uh, models made by Amazon and Google. So today's report doesn't add a whole lot more to that story, aside from suggesting that Apple hasn't thrown in the towel on the idea just yet. Uh, but it's good news for those HomePod fans who were sad when Apple seemingly ditched the HomePod smart speakers earlier this year. Man, so sad HomePod's week for not HomePod. As dead as you thought. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hope yeah. not. Uh, even though they're they're the original HomePod is dead in the Apple stores. I was just reading that they have completely sold out. You can't find them in, in Apple stores anymore. And they're actually, I was searching for Best Buy or on Best Buy for HomePods, and they're gone there too. So it actually is kind of sad. I was hoping they would go on sale and they would get clearanced, but I didn't actually yeah. see them get clearanced. So, because I really would love to buy another couple more for my house. What are they doing on eBay? Have you have you checked out? Oh, eBay? We should look, let's look right now. Let's see. Let's take a look on eBay. Oh man, that is some. This is good that radio. Is some quality audio. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, fill us in on something quick. Tell us a really entertaining story or a really entertaining joke while I see uh, HomePods on uh, how, on eBay. Let's see what. How about uh, if I tell people what they can win in this week's giveaway? Oh my goodness! Look at you. That <laughs> that's a real pro move right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! All right, I, I think I just found it. But go ahead. Let's do the Are giveaway. Are you oh my gosh about the giveaway or what you found on eBay? Uh, both, 
both. I'm so <laughs> impressed by both that I'm uh, I'm feeling overwhelmed and verklempt. But why don't you do us about the uh, the giveaway first, and then we'll move back to the uh, the HomePods. I'm I'm checking the boxes on uh, on eBay right now so that we can uh, bring up like the actual sold items and see how much they're going for on eBay. But in the meantime, go ahead and do it. Let's do the the giveaway. Yeah, and and is we, the giveaway on Cultimax? Should I bring that up too? It's, it's on the homepage there. You can see it. Uh, uh, this week we're giving away three stylish Stretch Link Apple Watch bands from our friends at Riley and Lowe. Uh, if you are one of the three winners, you get the band as well as a stacking bracelet of your choice. These are uh, unisex bands. Uh, they, you know, they look a little bit like those uh, classic Spidel uh, stretch links, right? Yeah. Um, but they're uh, they're very nice. I, I I I've never actually worn one of these. I, I had one here, but of course I've lost it in my desk, course, which needs a little course. bit of tidying up. But, um, <laughs> they're nice bands, right? I mean, like everything they're really else nice. In the they're really nice. They're really super store. nice. They're made of stainless steel and they have an elastic um, interior so that they stretch, you know, to put it on. And they. Um, uh, they stay plenty tight so you can uh, wear it during a workout and stuff and right. not have that ridiculous looking like question mark or whatever it is when your heart rate doesn't get tracked. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's what our giveaway is this week. Just go in there, sign up for free. Uh, you, you know, take your best shot. All right, let me post this in the chat and uh, I'll, of course, include a link to this in the show notes if you guys want to go in there. Yeah, I really like these bands a lot. They're really beautiful and they're simple. They're they're very minimalist, which uh, I like. So if you want to win yourself one of these, go ahead. I think your chances of winning are not bad. So go in there and and, <laughs> and register. You know, like you actually might win. It's worth your yeah. effort to actually go in there and do it. Oh, they come in. Uh, I didn't realize this. Seven different finishes: gold, rose gold, silver, gunmetal, black, navy, and purple. Oh wow! So many so many finishes. I have literally no idea if the winner gets to pick the color they want. I think that, yeah, I'm sure they do. Or if you're just going to send them one. Yeah. Here's your purple brown one. (laughs) Here's your Zune brown Uh, uh, (laughs) Apple Watch strap. Everyone loves Zune brown. (laughs) I remember that brown. (laughs) You don't? Oh, man. No, I do. I do. I absolutely remember the Zune. What a weird (laughs) product. Leander loved it. Heresy. Well, it was a good product. It's just a weird product. All right, let me see. I'm going back to the uh, – what screen are we on right now? I'm on, I'm on Lewis's screen. Okay, sorry. This is uh, – I want to keep this audio entertaining for everyone. So I was just clicking through on the uh, – there we go. Now it's finally working. I was clicking through. Oh, my gosh. OMG. OMG. Oh, is this a duo? No, this is a single. Holy moly. Okay, I'm going back into browser mode. I think, I think HomePod prices are actually going up. They are. This one sold for uh, $485. Wow. Sold for it. Not just listed for it? Sold for it. We're looking at sold wow. sold items now on eBay. Not just things that are listed, but actual sold prices. So here's another one that went for $355 plus four, $47 shipping. Wow. This one went for $300. Okay. This one well, went for $350, $380. $380. Sold it by high, uh, high to low. There's, there's two, but went for $1,000. Uh, I think I just saw that one. Holy crap! This this one That's is for space each. gray. For uh oh my gosh, two of them space gray, a thousand dollars plus plus ninety dollars shipping. That's for a pair. Here's one. Here's one that went for uh. It says it's brand new, but it's not in the box. Clearly, it's not that brand new. <laughs> this one went for so space gray is the popular one. This one went for three eighty plus twenty dollars shipping. This one went for four twenty. Dude, this is crazy. I'm telling you, there's there's got to be something going on here with with HomePod people. There is a cult following for HomePods. I love them, and I made a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Airphone Elijah. People loved the HomePod videos. They were some of my most popular videos that I made. Now, of course, they were dynamic, engaging. You got the eyebrow bounce going on. You know, you got the boom gadget hunter. So people love all that stuff too. But they also think that they like the HomePod content. But people love the HomePods. The HomePods, I know I've said this before. I'm trying not to get overwhelmed here. They really are one of the best products Apple ever made. They are they are truly magnificent devices. The audio that comes off them is it's borderline magical, borderline mythical. 
Here's another one that went for $580. This one went for $600, $475, $425. Are you getting the picture? Holy moly, I can't believe this. No wonder I can't find any of these online at regular prices. It's because people are hawking them on eBay for way more than they actually cost. Yeah, if you thought they were expensive when they came out. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. This is what Apple, this is all Apple needed to do to get the price to where they needed it to be is just discontinue them. (laughs) What's the seller's name? T. Cook? (laughs) (laughs) T. T Cook, yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I there's always made jokes bar- there, but yeah. Go ahead. Well, there's some bargain ones here too, though. I mean, it seems like the prices are kind of all, they, they are high. I'm looking at the same thing. You know, 450, 500 bucks. But then there's a couple that were like, you know, hit, someone snagged two of them for in Space Gray for three hundred twenty dollars for two. That's a nice deal. That's a good deal. Yeah. And it got twenty four bids. Dude, oh, uh, the deals seem shipping. like they're few and far between. I mean, now I'm looking at the the used prices now. And this one went for 285. This one went for 350, including shipping. This one went for 350, including shipping. You know, 300. So, yeah, you can get them for around 290 to 350 if you're depending on how um, how uh, studious you are on on following the prices and making sure you get a good deal. But, uh, dude, for the used ones, the used ones are now going for more than I actually paid for them brand new for the most part. So. <laughs> It's wild, man. That's actually a little bit disappointing because I really wanted to get my hands on some more of these. But uh, so now might be the time because I bet you the prices might just keep going up for a while since people know that uh, that they are magnificent products. So anyway, all that to say, I don't think the story of HomePod has reached the resolution that we believe it has. I mean, if you just think about the state of HomePod as it is now. So you had the HomePod original. And they discontinued it. They have the Mini, right? The Mini has the U1 chip built in, which the original HomePod didn't. And it had some nice improvements, like the LED animations and illuminations on the HomePod Mini, I think are much nicer than the HomePod illumination and activity that happened, or the uh, LED illumination on the top of the original HomePod. They don't sound nearly as good, though. The Minis, they sound good, but they are not nearly as thunderous (laughs) as the original home pods are they don't have the atmos support with the apple tv the home pod originals are like the perfect speakers if you have an apple tv they're the perfect soundbar replacement speakers for your tv because they sound beautiful they work great for music you can stream stuff to them they integrate with your apple tv plus they add atmos surround sound virtualized to your disney plus content to your apple tv content so they're good for TV watching, but now Apple is releasing an update that will that will allow you to use the HomePods on other uh, things that are attached to your TV. So you like your Xbox, your PlayStation, which before that wouldn't work. You could only get sound from your HomePods when watching or using the Apple TV. But now your HomePods can do the pass-through audio and will accept audio from anything going into your TV, which is a huge, huge bonus. And it was a free, it's a free update, so it makes them way more useful. So here's the other thing. Here's the other part of this story. One of the reasons I, w- I wanted to talk about this, okay? So, hitting up browser mode. Mysterious home OS platform leaks in Apple job listing. Well, that is curious, isn't it? How interesting. So, let me hit the story here. There is, uh, oh wait, that's not it. Oh, there we go. There's Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, Watch OS, and TV OS. Well, how about Home OS? Home OS. Signaling <laughs> ramping up of Apple's <laughs> <laughs> a signaling a ramping up of Apple's. You gotta be careful how you say Home OS. You guys gotta be you gotta be careful how you say it. Okay, Home OS. Okay, Home OS. Uh, signaling a ramping of up of Apple's smart home ambitions. Uh, am I in browser mode? Okay, good. <laughs> oh, <geez>. That <laughs> that is a. That is one take home from a new Apple Music job posting spotted online. It references a Hitherun 2, God, that's not easy to say, unannounced mobile operating system called Home OS. While Apple rolled out its HomeKit smart home platform in 2014, it has to date been a part of iOS rather than its own fully fledged operating system, okay? But maybe that could soon change and HomePod might have something to do with this. So <clears throat> Apple posted a job listing for a senior iOS engineer 
uh, on May 25th, the ad doesn't elaborate on what exactly HomeOS will comprise of, simply noting that it's a software platform belonging to Apple. Quote, you'll get to work with system engineers across Apple, learning the inner workings of iOS, watchOS, tvOS, and HomeOS, and optimizing your code for performance in ways only Apple can. Come join our team and make a real difference for music lovers worldwide, said the ad. It also included a reference, a second reference, to the mysterious Home OS. Quote, the Apple Music Framework team owns the technology stack that enables the system-integrated Apple Music experience on all our mobile platforms, iOS, watchOS, and Home OS. It said, now... Later, the ad was updated and the home OS reference was replaced with the word HomePod. But it's kind of interesting, isn't it, to, to replace HomePod or switch out HomePod for home OS when you're talking about operating systems and then you switch that one word. So I think so, that a recruiter, oh, what's that? Yeah, sorry, yeah, I was just agreeing with what you're oh, saying. Okay. Yeah. So so it seems like maybe a recruiter was a little too truthful in their job post and <laughs> then they were like, "Oh, uh we haven't announced this. Sorry. Uh we mean we mean HomePod. We mean HomePod." And we know that the HomePod operates as a hub in your home for you can use it for uh 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 for HomeKit support, right? So accessing your HomeKit accessories when you're not at home. It works that way. It's a great companion for your Apple TV. We've got HomePod Mini we have the uh, the report from Bloomberg that Apple is clearly working on other iterations of HomePod. You have the U1 chip support in the Mini, but it was never added to the HomePod. So there's like this this weird uh, lack of current technology in the original HomePods. I just wonder. It doesn't seem like HomePod is dead. It seems to me like there is a future for HomePod. The original HomePod is dead, but it may be resurrected in some capacity that will sell better. I think Apple realized we're just not making inroads with HomePod in its current form. We need to do something different to change people's perception on HomePod and maybe make it more useful, more practical in certain ways, and also have the great sound functionality that's built in. Now, this is just me speculating. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you love the HomePod, it seems like there is a future. And I think this job posting, out of all the things that we've seen, this job posting makes me think that clearly there's something that Apple is working on. We know they're working on new HomePods. There's something happening that we haven't, that hasn't been disclosed yet that we may see come to fruition in the future, which I'm very excited about because HomePod, one of my favorite products ever made. Tom Walker is saying, iPod high five forever. <laughs> I don't know about that, Tom. I think that... Uh, I got one right here. <laughs> is, it there? is it back there? Yeah, it's back here. Do you actually ever use it? Uh, well, uh, not so much because I've been using the HomePods instead. But I had it uh, hooked up to an Alexa, um, you know, uh, the little hockey puck. And, yeah, it was great. It's a really good sounding um, little speaker. Now, what would you say? Would you say that the HomePods sound better than the the Hi-Fi? What do you think sounds Oh, you better? know, good question. I don't know if I've done a head-to-head. But um, huh. I would um, – I don't know. You know, it sounded great. I was really impressed with it when it when I did fire it up and it, the the hot the hype the iPod Hi-Fi. I thought it was a, it's a really great speaker. <laughs> and it's sorry, I'm reading, I, I I'm reading it, the uh, chat while you're talking, which is never which is never a yeah. great idea. People are yeah. are commenting about uh, the Home OS moniker and saying it. Maybe they might want to they might want to come up with something that. Uh, reads a little bit differently but uh, sorry so you were saying that you're not quite sure if it sounds better I, but that's uh, a good idea I, i'll do a head-to-head yeah i'll check it out i would guess that the home pods sound better just because it was a- apple's custom technology now i don't know what they did to build out the the hi-fi but my guess is is they used on the market high quality components and didn't custom build this thing i mean that was that was the magic of the HomePod. It was completely g- built from the ground up by Apple. Well, so it was the iPod Hi-Fi. And it the, was the okay. The iPod Hi-Fi. They have it has a really elaborate um, internal. Um, uh, I, I don't know what you call it. Um, there are all these kind of air ways that are supposed to amplify the sound. Uh-huh. Oh, it's kind of like uh, the Bose technology. Is that right? Like that? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember that. That you know, I'm. I'm. This is when do they release this thing? I mean, this is this was released, you know, like twenty years ago, and I went to the press event. And I remember them making a big deal about how they d- custom designed all the 
the drivers, and they had also and custom de um, designed the enclosure, and the enclosure was designed to give it that sort of you know big bigger sound by having mm. all these internal airways inside of it. You know, so it acts like a speaker cabinet. Yeah, but it's been very it was very carefully designed, and then I heard as well. Um, uh, you know, not from uh, uh, this is like a, a rumor, I guess, but uh, someone I know who um, knows Johnny I said that they asked him, um, he was asked uh, internally at Apple what his favorite Apple product was, and he said the iPod Hi Fi. Really? Huh. God, Which that's... I don't know if that's true, but that's the story I was told. I mean, it's also just a absolutely sparkling segue to the, to the next and final segment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know if you did that on purpose. I... I don't know if you did I that on purpose. purpose. It's a pure coincidence. Yeah. Uh, let me just say real fast, though. I'm, I'm trying to bring up a picture of the uh, iPod Hi-Fi. They call it the iPod Hi-Fi. God, that name sounds weird to me. Like, it shouldn't, that shouldn't be the name because, I mean, I guess it was, it only worked with the, uh, with the iPod. But, uh, God, it really was a, a strikingly beautiful piece of technology. It looked like something out of the future. Like, it looked like Luke Skywalker's uh, stereo system. You know, like, I'm trying to bring up a picture of it here. Oh, I guess this is the same one we just looked at. But uh, a really beautiful. Do you have that chicken squawking out there? Sorry, someone's <laughs> someone's laying an egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, my guess is it's Phyllis. She always goes crazy. It's like it's just an egg. Relax. Just let let the process happen. The egg's gonna come out. You know, don't don't freak out. Did, did the uh, iPod Hi Fi? The picture I see on Wikipedia, the speakers are uh, visible. Didn't it have like a? Is that the way it is, or did it have uh, like a, a face? It, had a, it has a grill. You can pop the grill yeah. off the front. Okay. Yeah, I had like that's this. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Just like a traditional speaker, but uh, in any case, there's there there's your HomePod update. I still have hope. I still have hope, and Apple is still updating the HomePod with 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 new features. So I mean, like I said, that that new update that allows you to do pass through audio from any device that's connected to your TV and run the sound through your HomePod, that's a huge update. I mean, I, I'm not talking about technical complexity or anything. I'm just saying, like, as far as a, a livability stand, uh, standpoint, that adds so much more utility to your HomePods. I mean, now you could pipe in Xbox audio, PlayStation audio, and have it all going through your, your HomePods. That's just hugely useful. Uh, Phantom Gaming is asking for a shout-out. Absolutely not. Not. We're, we don't have time for that right now. Wait a second. Damn it. Okay. Uh, do we have any other stories here? Oh, okay, let's wrap up with uh, this one. Johnny Ive. <laughs> You're like, where's Johnny? Is he designing toilets now? Is he designing uh, new kinds of sporks? Well, he probably is doing all that stuff, but apparently he's also still working with Apple, and I thought this was a very interesting story. I mean, I thought I thought he was done with Apple, and apparently that's not true at all, and we may have him to thank for the new iMac. Isn't that right, Lander? Yeah, apparently. So uh, despite leaving the company in 2019, Apple's former chief design officer, Johnny Ive, helped design the new 24-inch iMac, according to an excerpt in Wired's review of the new desktop computer. Um, so he famously left Apple in 2019 to form his own independent design company uh, called Love From, right, which would have Apple as one of its clients. And, and Apple confirmed to Wired, they actually confirmed this, that Ive did indeed work on the new iMac, but stopped short of confirming or denying uh, whether his own firm, Love From, aided Apple in designing the computer after he left the company. Um, so, yeah, but it's uh, su that is super intriguing. I mean, I know that when he left, he said um, Apple was going to be one of the clients and he'd still be doing consulting work. Um, and it's interesting that after he left, you know, like since he's left, um, all of the um, – there's this sort of been this narrative that Apple's, you know, reverting – uh, is trying to make um, good on all the mistakes that he, the design mistakes he made, like removing all the ports, the legacy ports, removing the SD card, uh, MagSafe. You know, it was like Johnny Ive ruined, you know, so many products, and now they're making good on all the mistakes that he made. So it's kind of interesting to see that, you know, no, well, you know, maybe he, maybe he actually had a hand in this. So it kind of upends that narrative, doesn't it? That that everything that went that that, that people didn't like, um, the Touch Bar, that sort of stuff, you know, were were his. Well, down to him. Although, it is interesting that you look at how thin and light the new iMac is. Say. <laughs> and you're like, and how many ports does it have? Uh, wait a second. <laughs> that is awfully thin and light. Remember, that was like the one big complaint that everyone always had with Johnny Ive is like, he, he always pushed for thin and light in lieu of actual functionality. Like, bigger right. battery, pff, more ports, pff, 
don't worry about any of that stuff. We need it to be thin and light. And now you have this new iMac that uh, that is exactly that. And, and maybe Apple's new chips allow the products to be thinner and lighter while still being more energy efficient. Well, actually, that's true, isn't it? I mean, the M1 is hugely power efficient. And if they want to crank it up and get more performance out of it, they can. But even in its performance state, it's still way more energy efficient than like Intel's offerings. So, which is one of the reasons why battery life has gotten to be so much better with the M1, which is why performance is, is, is crazy and yet you still have great battery life. So maybe this, maybe, maybe this is the, this is, this is the update that Johnny was waiting for. This is exactly what he needed to get the perfect product. The thing that was thin and light, but still had great battery life that was still powerful. This is what he was waiting for. Maybe he's going to oh, come yeah. back. <laughs> he's like, wait, I, you finally what? got it. Let me come back. It's intriguing, though, isn't it? I mean, why why would they need? I mean, he has they, they, you know they have a big, big and, and very experienced industrial design team. Even though there were quite a few, uh, some of the old guard have left. You know, there's actually quite a few that the, the old guard have left um, along with him. Um, you know, I don't know. Do they really still need his help? And and it's intriguing, to, you know, to wonder what 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 his contribution was. You know, was it removing the the Apple logo from the chin? Was it ensuring that the chin was still in there? Was it the white um, bezels around the screen? Um, it, it could literally be something like, I think there should be colors. <laughs> right. I could, I could hear that. <laughs> I could hear him the literally colors, saying yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, it is interesting, though. And, and your point is, is one that I thought of, too, is, well, wait a second. They have this world-class design team. Why do they still need Johnny Ives' help? Do they need him still? Or are, is the industrial indi design team capable of being fully independent? How how much was his involvement? Now, I'm going to guess it was a significant involvement because why would they well, have his involvement just to say, oh, here are your colors, here are your color options? It seems like it would be more involved than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was sort of tempted to think that it was maybe aesthetic. You know, they're, they're, they're just trying to get his, his, his taste, you know, because he has good taste. Maybe they made a whole bunch of prototypes. Some of them were hideous. Some of them were really crazy and out there. And they're like, "Hey, Johnny, which ones do you like?" And you know, he made the he did the he he played the sort of Steve Jobs role, which is, you know, when Steve Jobs was around, Johnny Ive used to present him with um, you know a bunch of alternative designs, and they would get and they, and they'd ask Steve to choose, you know, which one did he like. So maybe he was like, you know, fulfilling that role. Mm. He's a sort of pseudo Steve Jobs, or I don't know, maybe it was more technical as well. You know, I know that um, when I did the Johnny Ive book, you know. Uh, 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 one of the designers told me they had a lot of problems with that that G4 iMac, um, and they couldn't get it to work. And they actually b brought in IDEO, you know, which is the uh, the famous um, design firm based in Palo Alto that they'd done a lot of work with, and they'd also recruited people from there. But you know, when they were stuck, they went outside to try to get some outside perspective, and and um, you know, I, they I, IDEO actually helped them break the logjam. You know, they've been working on that thing for a long time, they couldn't get it to work, and they had to bring in some outsiders in order to like, you know get it to work and eventually they brought in some new new fresh ideas so maybe it was one of those kind of situations i will also mention that the book that you casually mentioned it's it's no mere johnny ive book it's johnny ive the genius behind apple's greatest products it's got a four and a half star rating out of five and 538 ratings on amazon.com and you could secure your own copy today at well i'm not going to give the whole url because it's very long and there's all sorts of weird characters in it. But just search Johnny Ive book on Amazon, and it's like the first book that pops up because Amazon knows what's good. So if you search Johnny Ive book, this is the one that uh, – oh, look at that. You can get free. You can get it for free with uh, with a, an Audible <laughs> subscription. There you go. What? That's yeah. great news, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> there you go. Kindle edition, only uh, only 12 bucks. Very, very affordable. Oh, wow. Hardcover is 34 bucks. Paperback, 16 I think I have a hardcover book. Jeez. Get a signature and sell that on eBay. Did I say that out loud? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we're good, guys. Can I start the music? That's all that we have. Uh, I should the other, the, well, yeah, the other funny thing is, I, you know, what have we seen from Love From? I mean, it's been like, what, two, uh, two years now? And he was helping Airbnb redesign their app. But then I haven't heard Bupkiss about anything else. Yeah, that's it's peculiar. I, I remember I saw the story this week. I went and did a little research looking, trying to find, find anything, you know, and... and I found a website that that's like not even them, you know, it's like somebody built a website and said basically, hi, you know, I'd really like to meet you, Johnny. I've, uh, you know, send me an email. 
<laughs> it, <laughs> like you know, lovefrom.com or something. What that's what it was. It's I was like, just searching lovefrom.com and I'm not I'm not I'm not pulling anything up. Anything. Some sort of domain squad has got it. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's lovefrom.style. Lovefrom.style. Oh, dot style. Okay, yeah. But I mean, you know, it's just like basically, hey, you know, I really like your work and I'd really like to hear from you. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. No, I take that back. Lovefrom.style is not them. That is a squatter. This website has been designed to appear in searches for Love From. Well, and it does. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it certainly does do that. But do they have an actual... That's what uh, I'm saying. I, I couldn't... I don't know if there is one, man. Yeah, I don't know if they have one. He's so famous that he doesn't actually need to have a website. So uh, so I take that back. Lovefrom.style is not... Lovefromcompanies.com? Is that it? That's definitely not it. Uh, it's, uh, it has a picture of a dog on the front. So Yeah, I couldn't find nothing, man. Uh, I was, unless uh, Johnny Ive is designing uh, dog calendars now, <laughs> <laughs> which, I mean, it's possible. We don't know what he's working on. I mean, the dude is so wealthy. He probably is being super selective in what he works on and only taking on passion projects. I mean, think of how incredibly hard he worked for a majority of his life. And now I'm going to guess he's worth three or $400 million. I don't know. If I had to guess from his Apple stock... So why continue to work if you don't really just love what you're doing? I mean, the guy is probably just getting ushered around in his own personal Apple car and living the dream, designing forks and, you know, <laughs> urinals at uh, Barclays and stuff. Sporks. <laughs> Sporks. The new love from Spork. All right. Well, are we going to stay around for a Q&A, Lander? Are you sticking around for it? Uh, Five minutes. Yeah, sure. Five minutes okay. of Q&A. We'll do five minutes. And if you need to leave, you can leave. I'm hoping you'll forget and you'll stay for 10. But okay. uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So let me go ahead and cue up the music. And um, we will go ahead and get the show wrapped up. We'll be back as soon as the, the show is over. we had, we got to wrap it up for the audio. And then we'll come back and we'll do the, uh, the Q&A. So that's all the cult cast we have for you guys this week. We will, of course, be looking out for everything that is going to be announced at the keynote on Monday. Don't forget, the keynote is on Monday. If you want to come continue the conversation, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Arafon. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. Leander is at LKD. This has been the cult cast, the best 30 plus minute app conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the cult cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys next time I really kind of do have to pee though I'm like a 7 out of 10 I don't think we have time though Lewis you're making the I have to make a pee pee face too like that's, a, that's a question you better not answer <laughs> not on the live stream I feel like you're making a face that communicates you gotta go to I, I always have this face <laughs> <laughs> That's just my face. I, mean, I guess we don't have to play the whole song, but you know. We'll see who the real fans are. When we come back on in 10 seconds and see who's still here. Listen to that hi hat. Could use some accordion though, I think. Maybe you could rewrite us a theme song. Lewis? Can you play this bass line? Oh sure. It is the you know quintessential bass line, right? I mean <laughs> I didn't hear any oh. hi hat. You didn't hear the hi hat? You know what I find curious is whenever we end the show our viewership goes up. <laughs> It's just like a home pod. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're back. If you have some questions for, look, how often do you get to ask a question to the Leander Caney? I can't even ask him questions. He won't even answer them. So he's here. He is ready to answer any questions that you might have, no matter how personal. Yeah. If you have uh, any problems in your life, I'm sure we can help solve those. Or if you would like to <laughs> ask something about right, relationship problems, diet advice. Side advice, we got some gems for you guys, especially relationships. If you've got a relationship that's on the rocks, we got your advice here. If you have anything that you want to talk about, we'll let some of the questions start coming in. Don't let this fail, okay? If we 
don't get any questions. We're going to pretend like this never happened and just uh, end the stream and edit it out of the, uh, the stream <laughs> forever. All right. First first question from Henry Jones Jr. L. Kane, where in England are you from? That's a great question. Uh, well, I was born in London, in West London, Hammersmith, and then I, but I grew up in the Midlands in a little town, a village outside of um, Birmingham or Wolverhampton called Shifnal. Shifnal? <laughs> Shifnal. That sounds like a place Not- you'd be from. Right, S H I F N A L, and then I moved to Milton Keynes um, after that uh, for a, for a couple of years, and then I lived in Brighton when I went to college in Brighton, and then London. Milton Keynes is that like designed city, right? Yeah, right. Where the exactly. Marshall Amphitheater or Marshall Arena is. Uh, I uh, I don't know about that. They they had a big amphitheater there, like an open air amphitheater. I only what, have they called it the Marshall Amphitheater now? I don't know if it's an amphitheater. It's an indoor building. Uh, I only know this because they hold, you don't get believe this, darts tournaments there. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I left there, I mean, it was, you know, more than 20, 25 years ago now. And then when I was there, they were still building the city. It was, um, you know, like three quarters done. And it's changed a lot since I left. What an odd It was famous for having city. concrete cows. Yeah. Concrete right, what? They had concrete cows. These kind of these weird cows in a in they're a, hard in to a, milk. Yeah, but they're easy to look after. So <laughs> uh, they had yeah they had these uh, that was famous for that and and uh, like you said all these uh, and being a planned community. Oh, here's I a, wasn't a big fan of it. I, I hated that town. Here's a good question, uh, Matt seven eight nine five. What was the first Apple product you bought, Lander? That I bought? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because you were an Apple uh, journalist for a long time, so I'm guessing you just got products to reveal without having to actually purchase anything uh i don't know you know like my my old man i mean i got into it really because my my old man um was one of the first people in the uk to get a macintosh really they import well they imported into the computer lab but his uh, he, he worked um he was a, a college professor so uh they they got it in the lab um at his uh you know in his uh in his department and then we used to go in after hours and play on it. He would let us like, you know, do use Mac Paint and we print out these pictures on this old dot matrix printer that made the whole building shake when it printed. Um, but the first one I bought must have been um, I think it was like a G G three power Mac. Uh-huh. I think which that was, is, a, that was a beauty. Yeah, this is like after just after jobs came back to the company. And I needed a computer for work. No, uh, what am I talking about? It was um, it, uh, I had a, I had a, well, I don't know the one, the one I bought with my own money. I brought a Mac from the UK in my suitcase. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's what was in that suitcase, dude. That that iconic picture. I I gotta find that of you carrying the suitcase, like leaving England with the suitcase. You had that Mac inside there, huh? Uh, actually, no, I'm wrong about that too. No, I think the Mac came later. I think I'm gonna. Uh, oh heavens. Think, I think my dad brought it out for me. Abandoned ship, abandoned ship. This was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> We're having technical difficulties. Sorry. And I didn't buy that. He, uh, that was like a, you know, I, I don't know where I got it. Oh, how I got it. You know what I mean? I think it was like, maybe I did buy it. I, I mean, anyway, I'm sorry. My, my, okay, my, so, mine's so a bit messy. I guess you don't know. I'm trying to find this picture of you leaving England. I took, I think I took a picture of it and put it on my Instagram, but. It was like 20 years ago that I that I did this. Oh man, I just saw a picture of me with a mustache. God, I looked great. I should regrill one of those. Anyway, uh, why don't we go on to the next question? Okay, yeah, all right, all right. Next <laughs> question. Um, let's see here. We got uh, Ulysses saying the Puffco King is here. That's right, he's here. Soak it in. We, I'm 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 happy that we can actually see him. Usually he's here in such a vapor of smoke. We can only see like his eyeballs, <laughs> and they're very squinty. Uh, thoughts on the M1X iMac Pro? El Caney, any thoughts on the uh, M1X iMac Pro? M1X. Yeah, iMac. well, you know the potential. The one we uh, just the, talked about the iMac. Yeah, the, that's the iMac, quote unquote, Pro. If they if they come out with one, that's the next computer I'm going the next Apple product I'm going to buy, um, for sure. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I mean, it looks like it's going to be awesome. I, I I was thinking. I mean, I've been sat in front of an iMac, of one you know stripe or another for at least you know what is it twenty years or more. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, you know, I brought, uh, I remember when I didn't get the original Bondi blue iMac, but I got this, one of the second generation ones and I had to spend all the money in the world. I, we had saved up, um, 
you know, we were we were dirt poor, but I and I justified it because I was like, oh my god, this iMac, you know, I'll be able to write that novel that I'd always dreamed about. Or, you know, <laughs> Only on iMac, <laughs> freelance, yeah, exactly, all this freelance work and stuff like that. But uh, so you know, I mean, uh, I'm really excited about this one. Um, of all the you know, of all the iMacs over the years, I think this next one is going to be you know really a great computer because of that chip. Um, but also, like the design is cl- is classic, and the, and the and 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 the screens are so beautiful, uh, and I really like the, the the light. You know how they're so light and thin. It, it seems like it's silly, and at first I was like, kind of, you know, I didn't know if that, if if it was just you know being thin for the sake of it, but I, it does make a difference. I think it really does, you know, make it a, really aesthetically pleasing. It's really easy to move it around. Um, and put it in different places. You can be more experimental with it. You know, remember like some of the old, the iMacs that I mean, that the original iMac was was were like forty five pounds, and this thing is like you know half of that, if 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 that at all. So yeah, I, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, me too. I you know I I'm we're, the Mac Pros are going to be announced next week, almost almost certainly. But I'm like, so someone was asking me. Which computer are you most excited about? I'm like, oh, dude, I don't know. It's going to be really tempting to get the MacBook Pro. But knowing that the iMac, quote-unquote, Pro is going to, is out there, I'm hoping they announce it next week. I think I would prefer the iMac Pro because it's going to be more powerful. Now, look, I couldn't find the picture of Leander, but for those of you who've been with us a while, I think you'll really enjoy this picture of Leander. I think you're going to love it. Here's a picture of me and Buster. Look what's down below, Leander. <laughs> That was pretty funny. The CES. That was CES, and if you uh, recognize the blurriness, we use this app called Nudifier, which, uh, well, it just makes it look like you have, you know, a body part that you're trying to censor hanging out. Uh, and we use that for the entire trip on about 150 pictures. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's see here. Let's see. Here. Um, we talked about some of this already, so I'm going through here and looking for uh, for new. <laughs> Tomas wants to know if you can talk about your home pot. <laughs> Good one. Times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can talk about pot for quite a long time. Yeah, we could we could probably do a whole extended episode on on that. Uh, let's see here. Are you guys doing a live stream during the keynote? Says Dean. What do you th- What are your thoughts on that, there, Leander? Oh, a probably live stream. Not. No. Okay, so I'll take this one. So we tried doing a live stream, and I got smacked down hard by TC himself. Apple used to allow this. And apparently they do not any longer. And and I still have a a hit on my account from from trying to live stream a keynote. They they no longer allow it. So so if we did a live stream, it would not be us superimposed over the actual keynote because Apple doesn't allow that anymore. And if you if you're not going to do that, I feel like it kind of is um it gets kind of boring. Uh, does anyone have any p- purchase plans on potential WWDC releases? L- Leander, if they release a MacBook Pro, the new MacBook Pro. Are you throwing down for that beautiful machine? Um, I don't know. Probably not because it's going to be expensive. Um, yeah, very expensive. I don't know. But then again, you know, it would be great to review one of those things for the site. But, uh, you know, personally, I mean, the machine that I'm personally going to buy is going to be the next iMac, the, the, you know, the iMac M2 that we just talked about. Let's see here. Let4 says, did you guys see the Huawei? keynotes if so what did you think uh <laughs> forgot to watch i forgot to watch it i didn't see it lady did you see it i didn't see it but that is that um they they i, I saw the the headlines about the battery charging tech huh so they can now charge a battery um on a um you know on a on a, on a knife uh, on a on a, a a phone um what was it in a matter of minutes i think it was like eight minutes what? it goes to like 80 percent charge in like I can't remember the numbers now, but it was crazy numbers. Yeah, it was. They were really, really, um, and the, the, and this was just like a technical demonstration. So they don't have a product that can actually do this. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. I think I would have heard about this. Yeah, but it was. Um, I think it was Huawei. Anyway, I, I you know, I'm. I'm Eighty percent charge, one hundred and eighty degrees. Huh? Well, they they don't even sell Huawei's here in the U.S. I don't think. I don't think they're allowed to. No comments. No I don't know. It, yeah. I know that you know. It's, uh, Trump was fighting with them, um, but I think that's been reversed now, hasn't it? I have no idea, but I didn't think that you could actually buy Huawei <laughs> stuff here in the U.S., but uh, maybe maybe that's changed. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Dalva, Veronica, welcome. Johnny Ive, working on Apple behind the scenes in plain sight. Ain't that the truth? We didn't even know. We didn't even know. Streamline wants to know, Lander, do you still use the Siri? Do you still use Siri on the Apple TV remote? Uh, well, I was going to use it yesterday, in fact, but then I couldn't find the remote. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I would if I could find it. Because I had to type in my password, uh, you know, into um, into uh, into the Apple TV in order to, like, make a rental. And uh, it took me about 20 minutes to type, you know, to laboriously key it in on screen. Why, oh, not, just, so God, why not just your use phone. your phone? Yeah. Well, I... My phone and was in the other room, and I was too—I was too lazy to get up and go get it. Oh my god! I was still on the couch. Oh god! I was chilling there. Oh so god. have one of your kids bring it to you. Well, I tried that, and they refused to get up. <laughs> he, he, the, the, they were in the room too. They're like, "We're not doing that, Dad." Yeah, exactly. They ref- he flat. My son flatly refused. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. No, I would use it if I could find it. It was—it was actually great for that. You know, like that was the one thing I think the Siri remote on the Apple TV did actually work pretty well. Although I feel like if you're just trying to be lazy, it's way more effort to enter a character at a time with the Apple TV remote than just to go get up and use your phone and type <laughs> in. I feel like that's actually less work than trying to manage to do it on the remote. All right. Let's wrap up with this question since I think we're already at 10 minutes. We told the end that this would be five. Torque will. D-War. Torque will. Now with more staying power. <laughs> I'm not going make a joke. I'm not going to make it again. Sorry. I, uh, this is a plan on joke that I made last time I saw Torquil's name because it sounds like Mike Will, but for something else. Uh, Lander, if you had a few minutes with TC in an elevator, what would you ask him? <laughs> what? Hold on. Before you answer, I want to say it needs to, it better be interesting and profound and entertaining. Take it away. um that's a good one you know like uh i would um i'd ask him about uh you know his well there's so much to ask you know like doing the book about him it was you know kind of frustrating because it was it was difficult to get any you know information and to get people to talk you know apple's Mm -hmm. such a a company so singularly focused on secrecy that people just don't want to talk even years after they've left the company Um, so there were a lot of questions I had about, you know, everything, his whole childhood, his early career, his career at Apple, how Apple runs stuff. I mean, I'm totally fascinated by that. I did talk to someone who was in the, you know, worked in operations and she gave me this huge breakdown of like how exactly operations worked under Tim Cook. And, you know, I, I found it interesting. I don't think anyone else did, but, um, you know, the whole idea about how, how, how operations in a big company works. I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas about what you would ask him as a, as a question? I was just thinking about that. I think for me, I would probably ask him in in what ways, and, and I'm trying to I'm trying to think about how I would phrase this in real time here. In in what way has Steve Jobs' departure uh, irreversibly affected Apple? Like, so I guess my question is kind of getting towards in what ways has Steve Jobs' death, or I guess departure before that, harmed Apple in a way that they really just can't repair. Because I, I feel like there's something in there. There's something that he did for Apple that really was not replaceable. And if I had to guess, I don't know what what Tim Cook would say. If I had to guess, it would be being, it would be being Apple's. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say style advisor. I don't know if that's the right right way of putting it, but um, uh, it's the it's the role that's that that. Johnny Ive plays, but I don't think he does it as well as Steve Jobs. And that is being a great North Star and helping them know what products they should actually make and launch and what stuff they need to get rid of because it's outside of Apple's purview or outside of Apple's skill set. And Tim Cook doesn't do that. We know that Tim Cook doesn't do that. He, he delegates that to other people. And I kind of wonder if his team is really as capable as Steve Jobs was. So that's what I would ask him. Lewis? Anything before we wrap up here? Uh, I'd probably ask something like, you know, where, where do you think Apple's going to be in 20 years? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Uh, Tim Baker is suggesting that you ask the question, did you read my book, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. Perfect follow-up. You, you wrote a book about me? Oh, my goodness. That's so <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> why is this elevator taking so long? <laughs> <Bruce> <laughs> <Arnold says. laughs> which, which way is the restroom? That's 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 Tim's response to you when you ask him a question and he turns to you. And he's like, "Why is this elevator taking so long?" And starts pulling on his on his collar. Uh, let's see here. I'd like to know the one device that Apple didn't make that he wished they invented. Oh, that's a great question. I wonder if it would be the Apple camera. I still think that Apple, if they came in and made a, an actual camera, because their camera technology is so much better than everyone else's, and it's in your phone, but if they made an actual professional camera with the same technology built in, that would be an absolute destroyer. It would be so it, it would be so much better than Nikon or camera or, or Canon because those are just straight up well manufactured, great components cameras. They're not using computational HDR or any of the fancy technology that the iPhone is using. And if they if they combine those two things, a real camera with a with a beautiful sensor, like a full frame sensor a professional body with the technology, which is currently missing, that would be a groundbreaking device. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up there again because, uh, well, we've gone way too long here. We all have to eat lunch. And I, I, on a scale of 9 out of, or 10 out of 10 on the PP scale, I'm like, like a 9.2. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm slowly welling up because I drank this whole thing. So we got to go. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. We're going to stop the stream there. And thanks for your questions. We'll definitely do this again in the future. I, I think this is actually a lot of fun, and it's great getting questions from you guys. So we're going to go ahead and hit the end stream button, and we'll see you guys next time again. <laughs> <laughs> next time again. That's a great way to wrap up. See you next time <laughs> again. All right, cool.